Hola a todos, muchísimas gracias por ver mi video. Uh, voy a hablar un poco en inglés y español, uh, así que jugamos un poco. Um, bueno, voy a hablar un poco de quién soy. Mi nombre es Maysoon Philo. Uh, estoy en mi último año en la universidad que se llama The College of William and Mary. Um, soy el menor de, de cuatro hijas y vivo en el norte de Virginia, en una ciudad que se llama Ashburn Loudoun County. Um, y bueno, me gusta hacer diferentes cosas. A veces eh, encontró a sí misma dibujando, uh, me encanta correr afuera, uh, escribir también. Me encanta escribir, pero en una forma más personal. Um, si siento confundida o hay una forma de estrés, me encanta tirar mis ideas y, y ver um, lo que encuentro. Y no sé, es un poco para entender más quién soy. Um, so now I'm going to talk about two of my disciplines. Um, I'm finishing up psychology and Hispanic studies. Psychology for me has been something I've, I've looked at since the beginning of my time here at the College of William and Mary. It's very interesting to me to understand why, the, why a person is the way they are, from their traits, their habits, their thoughts, where they come from, their forms of attachment. And there are also various disciplines of psychology, including um, psychology, uh, cognitive psychology, or um, developmental psychology. But for me, what was particularly interesting is cog or community psychology. I think it's really interesting to understand the mental health of an individual and how their mental health is affected by the decisions a community makes, whether it's economically or socially or politically. And from there, we can understand that how an individual is not only affected, but their context is enormous and where they come from, their localities um, play a role of who they are and why they are the way they are. Um, I would also say Hispanic studies was something I found during my time here at William & Mary. It is in an amazing rich um, discipline for me and basically I, I really got into Hispanic studies during my first year here at William and Mary. Um, I had to start all over again of the grammar and the syntax and um, el supuntivo but um, then I got to see the bigger picture of Hispanic studies and it includes the pillars of culture, literature, and language. So I feel uh, in my personal opinion to understand the culture you have to understand the language, and to understand the language, you have to understand the culture. And when you understand the language um, of Spanish, you get to then jump into bigger issues and, and ideas of marginalization and fragmentation and local identity. And these contemporary issues are very important to me, or, or what I'm starting to figure out here in Hispanic studies. Um, I spent a semester abroad in um, una ciudad que se llama La Plata, que queda en el sur de Buenos Aires, y fue un viaje que, que aún queda en mi corazón, um, porque realmente en ese momento encontré uh, una cultura y una forma del mundo hispano que nunca había en mi vida, donde hay protestas que, que pasan por las calles y, y también um, en la conmemoración detrás de la dictadura y los que desaparecieron durante esa época, um, pero también el sentido de comunidad, y eso para mí es muy, muy, muy importante. Así que um, psicología y estudios hispánicos son básicamente ideo ideologías grandes para mí um, durante mi tiempo acá en William Mary. So now I'm going to talk about my previous teaching positions. Um, I did a little bit of informal tutoring throughout my time here at Women Mary and also in high school, but uh, officially and formally I would say um, the biggest position I've held was working with the modern language department as a teacher's assistant. And um, I basically helped taught a intermediate Spanish class. So um, Monday through Thursday, a professor would teach this class and on Fridays I would teach this class. He basically would go over um, and teach the students maybe a, a grand concept of grammar or, or the subjunctive and basically I would work with the students on Friday to make sure everyone understood this material, put this material into practice with different ex exercises. I would say it was challenging at first because first of all you have to present yourself a certain way um, and understand that you might make mistakes. You don't understand everything. 
but also to hone in on students that might not understand the material readily and to learn how to strategically say or explain a certain concept in multiple ways. I think is, is challenging and not enough credit is given to teachers and, and the work that they put in. Also, planning, lesson planning. Spent hours lesson planning um, because I really cared about the material that I was going to present and the way I wish I would present it. And you might not finish everything you want to do in a day. So you definitely, there's a huge learning curve with, with how to plan a lesson. Um, also came up with a grading template and a rubric for the students and um, would grade their listening exercises and also exams that they took. Um, but to talk about a particular story, for me that was one of the most... Um, rewarding experiences was one day I decided to bring in mate. Mate is a drink um, que está bebida en Argentina, Paraguay, Brasil y básicamente hay el mate. Um, it's a gourd that can be of wood, it can be of um, of glass and adentro hay hierba, loose leaf y una bombilla, uh, a metal straw. So I brought this in for the students and um, explained the terminology of everything so they could build their vocabulary, but also put something in cultural context instead of just reading it from a book. Uh, I, I, I also explained the process of how to make mate. And there is a beauty and an art to, to, to preparing it. So the sherba has to be in, uh, inclinado en una manera específica. Um, también hay mucha polvo que tienes que sacarlo. Um, so I, I explained this to them as I was preparing it. And I had all of the students drink it, or if, if they wanted to. If they wanted to try it out, they, they were more than welcome to. Um, and I think what's also really neat about this that day was they got to understand the symbolism that resides behind the mate, and that's el sentido de, de, de estar un, una forma que es um, inclusiva, que um, da, no sé, una forma de, de comunidad que para mí es importantísimo, que reside en el mundo hispano. Um, and I feel like this drink kind of lends to that sense of community while well, there's one drink shared within a group. So there's a pourer in charge and everyone gets to drink it. Um, but it opens conversations, charlas riquísimas de, de diversidad, de pensamientos. Um, and so I would say that's, that's been very um, memorable since my time here at William Mary being a TA at the college. Hola, soy Paulina Carrión, trabajo en la Universidad de William and Mary en el Departamento de Lenguas Modernas y estoy a cargo de la lengua básica, de español básico en, la, en el departamento. Eh, tengo a cargo además el programa de asistentes de cátedra y fue así como conocí a Maisun después de una entrevista eh, que tuvimos para, para que ella fuera seleccionada como um, TA asistente de cátedra. Y la razón um, por la que escogimos a uh, Maisun fue porque ella tenía muchas de las características que nosotros buscamos dentro de los asistentes. Una de ellas primero era su nivel de español. Tenía un español excelente eh, y era muy capaz de poder comunicarse con otros estudiantes. Estudiantes que probablemente podían ser o mayores de ella o de la misma edad pero al mismo tiempo de poder uh, trabajar con estudiantes de la misma edad o tal vez en, a veces mayor, era, podía ir a eh, entregar la información académica para que ellos puedan entender. Creo que um, Maisun tiene unas características que no siempre encuentras en estudiantes que dominan la lengua para poder enseñar. Creo que el hecho de que ella Um, trabajaba con, dando tutorías independientes uno a uno, le hacía mucho más fácil entender cómo pasar estos conceptos a la clase y a los estudiantes. Um, su pasantía que duró todo un semestre fue realmente un éxito. Trabajó nivel intermedio, trabajó con estudiantes de diferentes años en actividades orales, escritas, de repaso de vocabulario, de gramática reforzando conceptos gramaticales que los chicos habían estudiado con el profesor. Uh, y a la final creo que fue tanto una, una experiencia para ella, tan grande como fue para nosotros. Tenerle a ella siendo parte de este pool de, de asistentes de cátedra eh, hizo un trabajo increíble, increíblemente maravilloso. Así que cualquier institución estaría... 100% beneficiada de tenerle a ella trabajando. Es una, es una mujer 
súper apasionada por lo que hace y muy dedicada a su trabajo. Así que, vamos chicos. So I guess the next question uh, resides in the fact of where my motivation comes from and how it can be um, used to, to teach within the University of Cesar Vallejo and um, within Peru in general. I would say for me, um, motivation is so important and you find it when you find purpose and meaning to what you do. I also think that um, there has to be a sense of ownership and pride in the work that you decide to to really fall into and I hope that the students that I would potentially teach find that ownership and pride in the work that they do and find that intrinsic sense of motivation um, where it's from their own being that they want to do better. I think it's also important that whatever project you decide to to take on um, you don't just look at the beginning and end result but you see in which in certain ways in which you can take out um, what's important that you learned in that process and you can apply it to other aspects of your life. Um, I think it's important though to work within a group that is diverse, not just background and ethnicity but ideology and thought process because I think it's important to continuously have these questions of conversation to, and discover um, who we are, where we come from, our backgrounds and see how everyone that may come from different areas. So for instance, if I would come from the United States, um, I think it's important that not only would I teach this language of English to, to students, but of the grammar and the pronunciation and the syntax, but that they understand that there are bigger ideas um, that they can apply to their community, and we can have this connection that's built within the classroom, where not only I'm teaching them, but they're teaching me. And I think that's very important that you know that it's a dialogue that's played on two parts and the students have just as much of an importance and that cognizant awareness of, of their place within the classroom. Um, but I would say Peru for me seems a very beautiful country. Um, I think there's always, whenever whatever country, the good and bad. Um, but I feel like what resides in, in many places is the importance of education. And I think that it's important that students understand what they learn uh, the books that they read, what they they look at, they look at with a critical and analytical lens. Um, Peru has this amazing and rich culture of an indigenous pride, and that's something that I've tapped in on since my time here um, at William and Mary because I feel like different groups um, that are marginalized or are, are, are pushed to the side um, don't have a voice necessarily. So I think that um, my time in Peru and specifically in the university would be teaching English but also give students the ability to apply bigger aspects of life um, outside to their community and look at um, hopefully the US culture in not a stereotypical way but for me to talk to them about my culture and my experiences and they'll take that instead of what they'll see in the media. Uh, sí. vale. pues, uh... Creo que hay muy buenas razones por las cuales eh, Meizu sería una buena candidata para, para eh, un puesto de enseñanza de inglés en, en César Vallejo. Eh, una de las cosas más importantes que juegan a su favor es el hecho de que ella tiene dos especialidades, estudios hispánicos y psicología. Eh, esto es importante porque eh, demuestra su... Eh, la, la importancia que tiene para ella la comunicación intercultural. ¿no? Eh, además de, de manejar el español perfectamente y de comprender las diferencias culturales entre Hispanoamérica, España y los Estados Unidos, eh, eh, Meizun persigue dos objetivos claros con este puesto. ¿no? Uno es precisamente eh, aprender más sobre la cultura peruana pero además ser una embajadora cultural de los Estados Unidos. Eh, esto evidentemente significa ir, por un lado, a nivel del lenguaje, enseñando inglés, pero también ir más allá y eh, presentar un contexto y un contenido cultural apropiado eh, y analíticamente eh, adecuado para los estudiantes. Eh, esto, estas, estos objetivos de Misun 
eh, eh, se, articula, se han articulado bien alrededor de dos experiencias básicas. ¿no? Una, el hecho de que aquí en el Departamento de Lenguas Modernas, en nuestro, en nuestro programa de estudios hispánicos, Misun ha, ha sido jefe de prácticas. Eh, a, como consecuencia de ello, ella ha enseñado clases de español con nosotros, eh, sesiones prácticas, eh, una vez por semana, el semestre pasado, el semestre de eh, primavera, eh, otoño, otoño 2014. Eh, entonces, ella ha trabajado eh, con el instructor principal de la clase, con reuniones semanales, diseñando la clase, discutiendo objetivos específicos y, e implementando la clase que ella ha diseñado. Así que tiene experiencia docente inusual eh, para estudiantes de pregrado en Estados Unidos. Eh, la otra experiencia que resume bien estos objetivos de, de Misun es eh, la experiencia que tuvo en Argentina con una eh, pasantía o una práctica preprofesional con la Comisión Provincial por la Memoria. Eh, este organismo no gubernamental eh, tiene varios pro, eh, proyectos. Uno de ellos es una rama educativa que tiene que ver con la formación cívica de los jóvenes en el, aproximadamente en edad de la escuela secundaria, principalmente. ¿no? Entonces, ella fue parte de este proceso eh, que es formalmente organizado de manera anual y que termina con una gran presentación de proyectos de diferentes escuelas eh, acerca de conciencia cívica, eh, violencia del Estado, etcétera, etcétera, en, eh, con una gran presentación a final de, de cada año. ¿no? Y el hecho de que Meizun ha podido hacer esto combina fácilmente su experiencia lingüística en español, su eh, interés por la comunicación intercultural y su eh, fascinación por la docencia. Así que eh, creo que Meizun es una candidata ideal para trabajar en la Universidad de César Vallejo. Um, so the last question is uh, my expectations. Um, I think a big thing I've learned here through the College of William and Mary is to expect the unexpected. Um, but I would say I'm going to learn tremendously during my time in Peru, um, specifically how to teach, how to teach English, how to um, engage students in whatever material I present them with, ways in which I can di diversify and, and make that, that learning experience creative. Um, I think that's very important for students because we can't make the assumption that everyone learns in a particular way. Um, lesson planning and grading, but also I think I'm going to, I have the expectation of of building connections with students, with faculty members, with even the, the neighborhood I live in, and find my place within um, Peru's beautiful and, and rich culture. Um, I think that it's important, though, that upon my expectations, there are going to be down points. Everyone has them in life, but that I continuously um, seek out resources and, and ways in which I can express myself if something uh, does arise. I think patience is huge and compassion is enormous to have when you have the experience to go abroad. And um, I hope that um, my expectations are not only fulfilled, but I also had expectations that I never even um, thought of and, and that, are, that do occur there during my time in, in Peru working with the university. Bueno, eh, para concluir todo, quería expresar um, y decir estoy muy agradecida que podrían ver mi video. Muchísimas gracias. Y espero que puedan ver un pedacito de quién soy, um, lo que puedo demostrar y, y, y compartir con ustedes. Um, sería una experiencia genial, chévere, si tengo la oportunidad de trabajar con ustedes y vivir una porción de mi vida en, en Perú. Um, pero si tienen más preguntas para mí, um, me mandan un correo y estoy disponible. Y muy alegro que podría uh, hacer un video para ustedes. Gracias. Chao.